Uh oh, we just lost our uh, connection with Patty Gasso there for moments, but it's actually in good timing. We'll hear more from Coach as the day rolls on. But we're we're trying to get started as late as the Sooners showed up to the field. They're trying to get started now. So we'll take our pregame timeout number two. We're going to be short one because the Sooners are getting ready to take the field. The computer meltdown timed perfectly with Oklahoma in their anthracite uniforms getting set for a showdown with Seattle. And as the Sooners take the field, we'll take a break. This is Oklahoma Sooner softball from Learfield. Right on time, Sooner Softball pregame show abbreviated by a first pitch that is right on time. Carly Keeney gets the start. The first pitch is a little bit in for ball one to Seattle's Sydney Frankenberger. And we are underway on a Sunday in Palm Springs right on time at 9 a.m. local time. 1-0 1-0 is ripped foul down the left field line. We'll tell you about the Seattle Red Hawks as the game rolls on in our opponent preview presented by Holston Tax Resolution and Accounting. But they come into today's game 6-8 and eight overall. But the representative from the Western Athletic Conference has played pretty well over the few games they've played here. Here's a line shot to Alina Torres who leaps up and makes the catch and there is... Right away, one away, Frankenberger is retired. Let's set that Sooner defense for you. A battery of Keeney and Ludlam with Sanders at first, Torres at second, T.R.A. Jennings at short, Brito at third. First pitch, swing and a miss. Tay Wilson for strike one. Starting... Left fielder. Speaking of left field, that's where the freshman Cassidy Pickering is positioned as the 0-1 is in for a strike, 0-2. Center field, of course, is Jada Coleman, who is playing very shallow, probably about 10 paces off the cut of the outfield grass and the infield dirt. Same shallow play for Riley Boone and Wright. The 0-2 misses a little bit up. Wilson, a 214 hitter. Two for two on stolen base opportunities. Here comes the one two. Boy, that did not miss by much. Two balls and two strikes. I mean, that didn't miss by much at all. If it could go wrong in our pregame show, it has gone wrong. Bus showing up a little bit late, no fault of anyone. 2-2 pitch. Boy, that's again a really good spot, full count. Right before the first pitch, we lost power here on what I guess you could call the press table. Fingers crossed for a big day. Full count pitch, fouled straight back. Sooners are the home team for this game, but they're in the first base dugout. So this is a really cool perspective for us. We can see Coach Rocha and Coach Gasso monitoring everything the Sooners are doing. Full count pitch, swing and a miss. Keeney got her swinging. Strikeouts brought to you by Tinker Federal Credit Union, and there are two away here in the first. And that will bring... Mikey Morris. We had a great time last night with a ton of Sooner fans at our trophy club celebration. First pitch is up high for ball one. Me being the life of the party that I am, I went home and fell asleep before Saturday Night Live was even on. Yo, one is in for a strike. No balls in two strikes. Keeney, been fantastic so far this year, getting her second start. Grounds one right back to her, and it'll be a one-two-three inning as Keeney throws to first. 
to retire Morris. Three up and three down. We head to the bottom of the first inning. Oklahoma and Seattle are scoreless with the Sooners headed to the plate. This is Sooner softball from Learfield. Sooner starting lineup, as always, is presented by Norman Regional Health. Leading off is Jaden Coleman. Riley Boone up in the two-hole. Alyssa Brito batting third. T.R.A. Jennings in cleanup. Followed by Riley Ludlam, Ella Parker, Cassidy Pickering. Coleman lays down a bunt. There's no way. No way, right? Oh, they got her at first. Nice play popping off the circle. And there's one away. Stephanie Madrigal. The lefty getting the start. Pardon me, righty getting the start for Seattle U. Madrigal, two and three on the season. This is her sixth start. 296 average for the opponents. Boone shows bunt, takes ball one. Rest of that sooner lineup. Left off with Ludlam in the five hole catching. Parker hitting six as the DP. And it's Pickering, Sanders, and Torres. Seven, eight, nine. Pickering out left. Sanders at first. Torres at second. Pitch misses low. How about Riley Boone moving into the two hole today? That's something you. Haven't seen very often. She takes a breaking ball inside. Tall, lanky, righty. Stephanie Madrigal. Pitch. In for a strike. Full count. All whack first team performer in 2021, second team in 2022. Madrigal in an inning and two-third gave up a hit and a run and two strikeouts against Cal. That's ball four. Here's Alyssa Brito. What a weekend so far for Alyssa Brito. What a start to the season for Alyssa Brito. 412 average. Righty digs in. The first pitch swings and drills it down the left field line. Foul. We did get some clarification. So for those of you that are wondering about that, let's see, what was it? The sixth inning of that yesterday against San Diego State when they had called Brito back to the box. Here's the 0-1. That's in for a strike after she had singled. They ruled the ball foul. I, I still don't know how they did. It looked like it was clearly a fair ball. Way outside, ball one. One ball and two strikes. But Brito ended up walking and eventually scored on the double from T.R.A. Jennings. Here's the one-two pitch to Brito. Swing and a miss. Two away, second time we've seen Brito strike out this weekend. And here's T.R.A. Jennings. I highly encourage you to go check out the piece on the Oklahomans website, newsok.com, that Ryan Aber wrote about the Jennings family and how they've handled this weekend. Jennings swings at the first pitch, slow roller to third, bobbled, picked up, thrown, got her. We'll have to talk about that later. That was as quick of a first inning as you could ask for. No runs. One runner left. We headed the second. Oklahoma and Seattle are scoreless. Back to work for Carly Keeney. It'll be the four, five, and six hitter, Sin Fitch and Sipson for Seattle as we are scoreless as we headed the second inning. Righty lefty matchup. Sin, a 295 hitter, takes ball one a little bit out. The team leader, are tied for the team lead. There's three Red Hawks with six runs batted in. There's a strike. Opponent preview brought to you by Polston Tax Resolution and Accounting. Your tax problems don't care who you are, but we do. Seattle 6-8 and eight on the season. 
There's a grounder to the right side, gloved by Torres, throws to first, and there's one away. Jeff Hara, who is in his 25th year at Seattle, but his 10th as its head coach. Constant contenders in the Western Athletic Conference. And here's Taylor Fitch. They've done a good job in the portal, too. They've brought in some really good players as the first pitch is a little bit out for a ball. handful of them aren't on this trip. The 1-0 is popped down the right field line, slicing out of play. Oh, nearly a great play by a fan in foul territory. Crowd still filing in. This is 9.14 a.m. local time. The Sooners had a breakfast wake-up call at about 6 a.m. Pitch. Rip foul. Keeney ahead on the count of all and two strikes. But to say yesterday's afternoon off was welcome and a necessity for this team would be a dramatic understatement. The pitch in the dirt. The Sooners... Had a very early exit on Thursday to travel to Palm Springs. We were meeting the bus at 5 a.m. Central Time. And then a very late practice Thursday night, the 2-2 pitch is grounded softly foul down the third baseline. So it was a long Thursday, then you add the sit and wait around on Friday. And two incredibly late games. Last night was good for the Sooners. 2-2, ripped into right center field. Coleman has a beat, but he gets over her head to the fence. Quickly gets it back in. They're going to throw the runner out by a mile at second base. Fitch tried to stretch it to a double, and she's tagged out at second. When Jada Coleman threw a strike from the fence in right center field. Two away. Fitch was, <laughs> Fitch was trying to call for a review. She was pointing that her foot got in under the tag of Jennings. It did not. And Coach Ray was like, just come back to the dugout. First pitch strike to Simpson. Nicole Simpson, she's a Tennessee transfer. We mentioned there's a handful of fairly known transfers on this roster. Nicole Simpson pops this one down the right field line, slicing foul. That'll hit off the fence. Simpson pitched for Tennessee last year. Started three games. Pitch for the Canadian national team in 22. The 0 2 swing and a miss. Got her. Inning over. So after the line drive by Fitch, Jada Coleman shows off the arm, and the Sooners get out of the second without any damage. First hit of the game is a line drive by Fitch that's immediately erased on the base paths. We had at the bottom of the second inning scoreless. This is Sooner softball from Learfield. Riley Ludlam will lead things off for the Sooners in a scoreless game as we have the bottom of the second inning. First pitch to Ludlam is low for ball one. We got two games today, kind of a rarity here for the Sooners in the Marion Utter. Loyal and Marymount coming up a little bit later on in the day. Here's a pitch that's popped foul. A ball and a strike. Then we'll head home for the grand opening of Love's Field. There's a bomb. Deep to left field and long gone. Oh, Riley Ludlam wakes him up on a Sunday morning in Palm Springs with a blast over the left field wall. Her first in a Sooner uniform and she airplanes into home plate. It's one nothing Sooners. 
Wow! Ludlam leaves the yard and it's one nothing OU. I mean, that was a no doubter for the first home run for Riley Ludlam in a Sooner uniform. Home runs this season are brought to you by the dedicated people of Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas. One nothing Sooners. Here's Ella Parker. First pitch to Parker is a little bit out, ball one. We said it days ago. Parker takes a 1-0 pitch high, 2-0. Riley Ludlam is almost demanding that she be in this starting lineup. With the way that she's hitting the softball. There's the 2-0 way inside, ball three. Ludlam improves to... Six for 15 on the season. There's a strike, three and one. Hard hit ball, nice play at first by Fitch on the backhand. Gloves and takes it to the bag, one away. So Riley Ludlam currently sitting at straight up 400 with her batting average. Here comes Cassidy Pickering. One away for Pickering. What a day yesterday for the freshman. First pitch swinging and she pops it foul and out of play. Sooners. Definite game plan here against Madrigal looks to be to attack early. She wanted a new softball and gets it. Here's the pitch to the freshman. Showed Bunn actually pulls it away, takes the ball. Two for three yesterday against San Diego State. She's riding a modest three-game hitting streak. She is five for eight with three runs scored and a run batted in in Palm Springs. There's a ball low and away. Two balls, no strikes. Pickering has had a hit in five of the last six Sooner games. She had a good cut there and fouled it back. Two balls, two strikes. You get the sense, too, that Cassidy Pickering's getting a little bit more comfortable as well. Just in her personality and being a little bit more open. The 2-2 is low in the dirt, 3 and 2. Sid Sanders waits on deck. Pitch. Ball 4. Pickering... Took a double check of the home plate umpire to make sure that Robbie Guest didn't have that. As a strike today. He did not. Ball four. It's the second walk for a Sooner. And with one away and a runner at first, here is Sid Sanders. See if the Sooners can't blow this game open early. First pitch to Sid. A little bit low. Ball one. That is... A good-looking pitch from where we're sitting. Robbie Gast, our home plate umpire. Smokey Eds at first and Ron Burkhart over at third. Though he's positioned behind the second base back here. The runner's not going as the pitch misses low. Ball two. You don't see Sid Sanders very often this low in the lineup this year. She takes a strike, two balls and a strike. If there is one area that has been pretty incredible about Sid so far this season. She is 
waiting on her pitch. Seven walks so far this year, the 2-1. She swings at a bat pitch and pops one into shallow left field. The shortstop Morris races out and makes the catch, and there's two away. And here is the nine-hole hitter, Alina Torres. Sanders looking for her first hit of the weekend is now 0 for 6 in the Marionetta. First pitch to Torres is up high for a ball. Alina getting her sixth start of the season at second base. Though that average not where she wants it to be, currently hitting 250. She takes a strike, a ball and a strike. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Headed home. Lifted down the right field line, falling fast, racing out, and making a sensational diving catch is the second baseman, Garcia. She took away potentially extra bases, maybe even a run. But sooner strike first on the home run from Ludland. And as we head to the third, it's Oklahoma 1, Seattle nothing. This is Sooner Softball from Learfield. <laughs> Sooner Softball is brought to you by OG&E. OG&E, we energize life. First pitch of the third inning. Carly Keeney stares in. Grounded foul down the third baseline off the bat of the seven-hole hitter, the second baseman, Lily Garcia. one nothing Sooners on the solo home run from, well, I almost gave it to Cindy Sanders, Riley Ludlam, the first home run of the season. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Line drive, right field, Boone steps in a few spots, makes the catch, and there is one away. That'll bring Walling to the plate. Oklahoma Athletics would like to thank the official Eat, Play, Stay partners. Visit Norman, Cup Bop Courtyard by Marriott, Midway Deli, Nashford, and Norman, NCED. Soonersports.com for more information. As always, our third inning shout-outs are brought to you by Century Roofing. Century Roofing on guard for Oklahoma. I was going to say, no one got in earlier than Sharice this morning. First pitch swinging, grounded foul. Sharice checked in from Austin about an hour ago. Gunny was a close second. <laughs> no balls and a strike to Walling. Mark Montgomery has us tuned in in New Mexico. Here's the pitch. Looped into shallow left field. It's trouble, and it falls for a hit. Walling is aboard, and that'll bring Spatafora to the plate. Karen Spatafora, the only freshman in this starting lineup for the Seattle Redhawks. Starting catcher. Hitting just 222 in the first pitch is in for a strike. One away in the third of a 1 0 sooner lead. Mark Worley is checked in from Chagrin Falls. Karen Day from out in California. Larry and the St. Pete Soonered in. There's a grounder foul down the third base line. Nate Dog watching. Oh, the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. How about that? Our buddy Jerry Isbell headed to the gym. Jay Kennedy's Mara's parents are in Frankfurt, Kansas. Mara Kennedy Dickman, the Sooner Athletic Trainer. 0-2, frozen. Cold strike three. Right down Lindsay. Third strike out of the game by Carly Keeney. And there's two away for the leadoff hitter, Frankenberger. Sydney Frankenberger, the senior, hitting 327, lined out to second in her first plate appearance. The left-handed hitting senior digs in. Here's the first pitch. A high ball one. You know, Jay, we probably could have used you on this trip, to be honest. 
because there is about a 1.45 local time, not drop dead, but there's a second plane that all the staff is on. Here's the 1.0, and it misses low and away. And they've told us we must be on that flight. Now, I think everyone in Sooner Nation knows that if we're still playing at 145, 345, I'm going to miss a flight because I'm not missing any of this action. The 2-0 is in for a strike, 2-1. and one. But, Jay, if you were here, I'd feel a little bit more confident. i just give you the headset and let you take over. Paul is in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Good to see Paul and his family last week. Greg with the Compete Team Barbecue. Trey Linda tuned in on a beautiful day and more. 2-1. Line foul down the left side. Out of play. Look out in the stands. Mickey and Nick checking in from the first baseline here in Mary Nutt. After Susan Walden. Bill is in Edmond. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Headed home. Low and away. Full count. And yeah, we we apologized. Uh, I mean, I kind of blame traffic just because it took us a second to get parked, but I think we just probably left batting practice a little late, to be honest with you. Full count. Swing and a miss. Oh, she just got a piece of it. That is why the pregame show, Auburn, and our crew that's helping us out at the franchise, I don't know. We got Auburn. Matt helping us out today over at 107.7 and... AM 1560, 103.3 FM. But I'm sure they weren't very happy whenever they get the text. It's like, we're not going to make it on time. The <laughs> 3-2. Oh, that just missed outside ball four. And Seattle's put together a threat here in the third. First walk of the game for Keeney. It's been an issue this weekend for Sooner pitchers. More free passes than you typically see. And that'll bring Wilson to the plate. Ty Wilson, strikeout victim in the first, swinging at the first pitch and fouls it back. one nothing Sooners. We're in the third. A solo home run by Riley Ludlam is the only action so far, but Seattle has put runners at first and second. Here with two outs in the top of the third. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike two. No balls and two strikes. Here's the 0-2. Way outside, one ball, two strikes. Sooners will have plenty of time. I don't believe their flight is leaving until about 3 o'clock local time. Here's the 1-2. Popped up behind home plate. Well out of play. And there's not a lot of action here early today. There is one other game that was going on whenever we came to the fields. Illinois was playing earlier. Fouled straight back. Illinois and Hawaii were in the top of the fourth inning. It was 5-2. to two. Oh my goodness. They made Hawaii play one of the early games? So that would have been about an 8.30 a.m. local time first pitch. That's cold. The 1-2. Frozer. Cold strike three. Right down to Lindsay. And down goes Wilson, and down goes the Red Hawks in the third. They strand two, but as we head to the bottom of the third inning, it's one nothing Sooners. This is Sooner softball from Learfield. Back to work for Madrigal, who's been pretty good so far. First pitch to Jada's up high, ball one. I mentioned our third innings are all about appreciation for those of you who have tuned in all weekend long. Third inning shout-outs brought to you by Century Roofing on guard for Oklahoma. CenturyRoofingOK.com, the 1 0. Jada didn't want to swing at it. As she checked her swing, that ball came up and in and tipped right off her bat. She couldn't believe it. Strike one. 
So a very special happy anniversary to Jul- Julie and Pete Bitterman. They're in Elmwood Park, Illinois. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Line shot towards short. Nice play by Morris. Quickly to first. They retire Coleman. And there's one away. 30th anniversary. So happy anniversary, Julie and Pete. You have an awesome daughter. And diehard Sooner fans. I would like to try to talk my wife into spending the 30th wedding anniversary when we get there listening to Sooner softball. I don't think it would go so well for him. So happy anniversary to the Bittermans. First pitch, a little dirty, but it misses inside, ball one. And Doug Hamilton has checked in from Hockley. Mitch Wood up in Owasso. Lisa, Judy, Sooner Judy in Silver City, New Mexico. Miss Jane Jetson in Dallas. There's the 1-0. That catches the outside corner, one and one. Boone walked her last time up on the season for Riley Boone. Her fourth walk already. She's hitting 393. Among the team leaders with nine runs batted in. The pitch. Showed bunt. Pulled it back as she ran up the box and takes a strike. One, two. I say among the team leaders, but an early candidate for player of the year, T.R.A. Jennings, already has 15 runs batted in. Here's the one, two to Boone. Nice pitch. Missed a little bit in. Shake of the head and disbelief from Madrigal. She thought it was strike three. Two balls, two strikes. Boone checked the count with her home plate umpire. Robbie Guest, a 2-2 pitch. Lifted deep to left field, chasing it towards the line and making the catch in foul territory is the left fielder Wilson for the second out of the third. Jonathan's down in Waco. Kevin's in BA. There's Zane Jana and Rick checking in. Rabbit, Arkansas for Fly Sooner today. Well, Jennifer is listening in Vegas. I think we've got a stop in Vegas on our flight back. First pitch to Brito is in for a strike. It's one nothing Sooners lead it. Solo home run in the second from Riley Ludlam. That's it. That's their only hit so far. Brito was a strikeout victim in the first. Here's the pitch. Way outside. Say that we were in a bit of a hurried situation, would be an understatement, getting here to the stadium. Hurried, hurried? The 1-1. Ground ball softly hit towards short. Up with it is Morris, and it's a frustrating 1-2-3 inning for the Sooners. Hey, they weren't into the shout-outs today, but thanks to uh, Sox and the crew listening in Nebraska. Mission Point Apartments and more. Just south of 19th Street on I-35 Access Road. Mission Point Apartments, a case and associates property. Mikey Morris grounds the first pitch of the fourth foul down the third baseline. Oklahoma leads Seattle one zip. Tight game. The Boone family's checked in from Broken Arrow. That makes my day. Happy Sooner. Sean and Big Rob listening at Henry Hudson's. Good pitch, low. One ball, one strike. One nothing sooner is the only run in this game on a solo home run by Riley Ludden. That's it. The pitch. In for a strike, one and two. Morris grounded back to Carly Keeney. She batted in the first inning. Keeney has been effective. The pitch. Line drive, face it. Back up the middle. Coleman cuts it off. There's the tying run. Sooners have been a little bit tight at the plate here today. Here in the fourth, it's only a one-zip game. Last time up, Ava Sin grounded out to second. We could use that again. Nice little 4-6-3 double play here. Here's the pitch. In for a strike. If you were with us yesterday, as we wrapped up, we told you get to the franchise on 107.7 to listen to the end of Bedlam. 
boy, were you rewarded if you did. The 0-1 is up high, 1-1. One and one. What a great finish. JV and McCullough. The fadeaway three to win it at the buzzer as Oklahoma swept, sweeps Bedlam in both men's and women's basketball. Here's the 1-1. One, one. A little low to him. And I can't say enough how amazing the final call was from our buddy Toby Rowland on the Sooner Radio Network. We got chills listening to it in the bus. Here's the 2-1. Boy, that's in for a strike, 2-2. Two two. We were following along while the Sooners were signing autographs during a mosh pit of fans trying to get autographs. High fives, fist pumps everywhere. What a finish. Here's the 2-2. Two, two. Boy, that's a really good pitch that just missed a little bit out. No one in that Sooner dugout can believe it, including Jen Rocha. Gets up off her bucket, takes a little walk, sits back down, calls the pitch. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. Righty lefty matchup the pitch. There you go. Full don't lie. Swing and a miss. Strike three. That's the fifth strikeout for Keeney. Strikeouts this season brought to you by Tinker Federal Credit Union, Oklahoma's largest credit union. Uncle Bill and Mimi listening in on the way to Piedmont to watch, I would say little Owen, but last time I saw the Pinley's nephew, he was not little. Here's a bouncer foul. 11 years old now. Man, watching that kid run around. Hard to believe. Ron White's got us tuned in today. OU Architect is at the trails. Oh, my goodness. That reminds me. we got to give you the trails weather report. Of all the things we haven't done, we haven't done that. Ground ball foul down the third base line. It's gorgeous. This is a stark contrast from what we had a year ago. And the main reason why the Sooners have come here to the desert for the better part of, what, the last 18 years? Here's the 0-2 pitch from Keeney with a runner at first and one out. Grounded foul down the third baseline. By the time weather.com rolls around, we'll be out, out of the inning. 69 degrees, nice, here in Cathedral City. We'll be pushing towards a high of 80, but we'll be long gone by that point later this afternoon. Wind gust up to 4 miles an hour. 02 is lying down the right field line, fair. Boone cuts it off. The run around second, that's Morris. On the way to third, then the ball got away. The throw to home got it. Out by a mile. The ball got away on the relay to Torres. Jennings picked it up, threw home. Ludlam blocked the plate perfectly. And that's the second base running mistake by Seattle. And in this instance, it cost him at least a little bit of pressure here in the fourth inning. Two away. Fletch, I mean, that ball barely got away. And you get the sense that from Murray, it's a little over-aggressiveness from Seattle, their head coach, but he's not mad. First pitch is in for a strike. And a great job by Riley Ludlam to block the plate without obstructing it. Because she got the ball so early that Morris was out by more than a step. And she did not block the path. Beautiful play. The 0-1 pitch misses low, 1-1. One and one. Score remains one zip Sooners. Deeper concern here is that Oklahoma just hasn't been able to get the bats going here today. Just one hit, and it's the Ludlam home run. Here's the 1-1. That's in for a strike. That was a big-time play. That was a big-time play for the Sooners. No, it's Seattle. Everyone wants to beat OU. The one-two bounced foul. 
Seattle sits at 6-8 and eight on the season. Already playing its 15th game of the season. This is game number 13 for the 12-0 and 0 Sooners. One ball, two strikes. The pitch just gets a piece of it to stay alive. Simpson was a strikeout victim. One of the five strikeouts that Keeney has had so far today. Strikeouts is always brought to you by our friends at Tinker Federal Credit Union. One ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch for Keeney. Hard hit foul. I will say this, Seattle is hitting Keeney pretty hard here. Good news is most of those hard hit balls have been foul balls. Two hundred down each line, two twenty to center field. That's the dimensions here. The one two line drive right center field. Jada Coleman, an amazing diving catch. You can call out a no fly zone because that's exactly what it was. Coleman leaping and taking away the single and ending the fourth inning on what has become routine for the senior sensation. What a play. Inning over. You hear it. T.R.A. Jennings leads things off in the fourth. First pitch is a little bit out ball one. Jennings grounded out to third in the first inning. Tiara yesterday went three for four with a home run, four runs batted in. On the weekend, she's hitting 500 with seven RBI. Here's the 1-0. A little bit low, but that's going to be a strike. 260 career runs batted in, 78 home runs, 53 career doubles, 234 runs. She's currently second all-time in Sooner history in runs batted in. Surpassing low Chamberlain this weekend. The 1-1 one, one pitch misses out. Two balls and a strike. Here's the 2-1. That's a little bit up. 3-1. and one. Tiari is currently tied. Thank you, Jessica Bain. 15th all-time in career... RBI. A pitch. Swings and pops it up. Center field problems, though, for a moment as Frankenberger lost it in the sun, but recovers to make the catch, and there's one away. So Tiare is currently 15th all time. Looks like that number she is chasing is what, 270 to get in the top 10. Am I, am I reading that right? First pitch to Ludlam, who homered her last time. This is low, ball one. At my count, I've got Tiari at 260. So that next number to reach is 263. Megan Gregg out of Tennessee. The 1 0 misses low, 2 0. A bigger concern here, this is only a one-zip game. A solo home run by Ludlam. The difference so far is Riley digs in here in the bottom of the fourth inning. But having the count, two balls and no strikes. Here's the pitch. Swings and ropes it down the right field line. Slicing foul. How many of you guys are as excited as I am for next weekend? Grand opening of Love's Field. Now, if there is one thing Coach has consistently talked about, many on this trip too, is the preaching of patience. This will be, I guess what you can kind of say is a soft opening. There's still a lot of work that will be going on around the stadium. It's patience. 2-1 to Ludlam is high, 3-1. The pitch. one nothing Sooners, we're in the fourth, bottom of the fourth. Tight one here in Palm Springs. Here's the 3-1 pitch. All four. And here's Ella Park. 
So if you're coming next weekend, please, 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 patience, patience, patience. But enjoy it. Here's Ella Parker. If you haven't seen Ella Parker in person yet, just wait. First pitch to the freshman is a little bit out, ball one. Parker grounded out to first on a hot shot. Saying she grounded out is so unfair. That was a laser on a nice play. Two to three really good plays by the Seattle infield so far. Here's the 1-0. Ella takes it a little bit out, 2-0. I see Larissa and her crew listening in Abilene still today. Eric Hulk, one, two of my favorite people. Here's the 2-0 pitch. In for a strike, 2-1. and one. Paige Cole in Tulsa. Oh, my goodness. Speaking of Tulsa, Natalie Cash is tuned in. Here's the 2-1 pitch. That's lifted deep. To center field. Get out of here, ball. It's gone. A home run to the deepest part of the field from Ella Parker. And the freshman hits her second bomb of her season and her career and puts the Sooners on top three nothing. A two-run jack over the center field wall. And Parker makes it three zip Sooners. There is this gorgeous dog that is sitting next to me that I'm afraid every time I jump up he's gonna he's gonna have some sort of reaction but he does not my dogs would be freaking out not this dude home runs this season brought to you by the people Oklahoma oil and natural gas here we go Cassidy Pickering now a little breathing room for the Sooners three zip first pitch a strike My goodness, Natalie Cash. Shouts out to Natalie's mom. Natalie and I were meant to be a radio team. I'm telling you right now, Mama Cash. The 0-1 misses low and away, 1-1. One and one. Don't forget, too, next weekend our buddy Greg Scallion points out it's not only the home opener, but the OU women's gymnastics team plays in Michigan. Plays, competes against as the 1-1 one, one pitch misses high, 2-1. and one. That Sooner dugout has come to life thanks to Ella Parker. She bombed that one over the center field wall, making it three zip Sooners. 2-1 is fouled at the plate. Prepare yourself for the diehard softball fans this week. Those of you like my man Seth, Jessica Bame, who live this like we do. A 2-2 pitch is low and away, 3-2. There is going to be some interesting conversations about the softball itself. Here's the 3-2 pitch to the Sooner left fielder. Swings and rips one into left field. It's a base hit. Here come the bats. Here come the bats. Pickering is aboard, and here sits Sanders. 3 nothing Sooners with a runner at first and one away, and that'll do it for Madrigal. And we'll have our first Love's Travel Stops pitching change of the game. And it looks like Morris is going to come in to pitch every Morris. The the lefty, I think it's the, I'm a moron. I had Madrigal list, listed as a lefty. I think Morris is the only lefty that they have in the seven different pitchers that Seattle has used so far this season. And she'll take over. And Hannah Core is going to pinch run. So Pickering gets the single and Hannah Core will pinch run. Sid Sanders slated to hit here as the Sooners will get a chance to see one of the Seattle arms that has thrown quite a bit this year in Avery Morris. One of five siblings. 
or she has five siblings, and Natalie, Erika, Aubrey, Grant, and twin sisters, and her teammate Michaela. Aubrey played softball collegially at Florida and was a member of Team USA in the 2020 Olympics. So what I'm telling you, a pretty good bloodline here for the freshman who is making her sixth appearance, her third of the weekend, 13 in the third innings, an ERA of 1.58. She inherits a runner at first with one out. Sooners now on top three, zip, bottom of the fourth inning. Let's go, Sid. First pitch to Sanders is in for a strike. I'd mention you in that group, Jackie Wins, too, that, that lives softball as well. I just haven't heard from Jackie in a while. There's Cindy Morrison who's checked in from up in Tulsa. But keep an eye on that storyline this weekend. A lot of debate about the different softballs that are being used in their weight. The 0-1 to Sanders hit her. If she's not walking, she's reaching on a hit-by-pitch or a core off to second base. That is... The second time that Sanders has been hit by a pitch this season, she's tied for the team lead with seven walks, and here's Torres. First pitch to Alina is a little bit out, ball one. Three-nothing Sooners. On a two-run homer from Ella Parker and a solo shot from Riley Ludlam. Pitch. A little low. Those updated team numbers on home runs for the Sooners this season. One ball and no strikes. Torres swings and lifts one a mile high down the left field line in foul territory. Wilson races over and makes the catch and there's two away. Four tags, takes off her third. And she's going to get there right underneath the tag. Sanders easily advances to second. There wasn't much room in foul territory. And that wasn't that deep. Core just took off and beat the throw underneath the tag of the third baseman, Walling. Two away for Jada. Jada had a two-out RBI single, two-run single first pitch Jada thought about it waited on it took it for ball one one ball and no strikes second and third two outs the pitch Jada takes it low well, Seattle's dugout is not happy about that and Spatafora, the catcher, as the pitching coach jumped up, said, no, 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 coach, that was a little bit low. Pitch stays up, all three. <laughs> I caught a Riley Boone as soon as it was ball three. She kind of looked over to the, the Sooner well, if you will. There's a dugout and there's a camera well right next to it. And had a big smile on her face. She wants to bat with the bases loaded here. The 3-0, that's in for a strike, 3-1. and one. Cool moment last night, by the way, was, well, we'll get to it after this 3-0 pitch, or 3-1 pitch to Jada Coleman. Morris stares in, the lefty brings it home. Pop up a mile high down the right side. Is he going to get out of play? It will. Riley Boone's phone was connected to the speaker in the bus. The team listens to its music. And right around that time, her brother Trevor called. She was giving him grief for an at-bat that he had. But then Gaelic called and we got back to the music. Here's the 3-1 pitch to Jada. 3-2, excuse me. And this is lifted pretty deep to left center field. Not deep enough. Ranging over and making the play is the center fielder, Frankenberger, and that'll do it for the Sooners in the fourth. Oklahoma strands two more, but they add two more. And as we head to the fifth, Oklahoma three, Seattle nothing. This is Sooner softball from...
Seattle steps to the plate, trailing three zip as we head to the top of the fifth inning. It'll be Garcia Walling and Spadafora. As Carly Keeney continues to deal, first pitch grounded foul down the third baseline. We mentioned those home run numbers for the Sooners. They now have, as a team, 18 home runs, which might seem a little bit down this early in the season, but I would also add that we brought up the rumors about different weights, soft, softball sizes. That definitely has not been flying out here as it typically, uh, typically does, as the 0-1 is high. We haven't had a good old-fashioned controversy about Softball in a while. Big Zill asks, different softballs in different tournaments? Yeah, that seems to be the question. The 1-1 is line foul down the right side and out of play. Brenda's is out in Lindale. Bobby's checking in for B.A. I like what Tim Jones tweeted. They're retrieving that softball from the outfield. It bounced into Ludlam, and it popped right out of her glove. The season is about appreciating the senior class like no other, but this cast of young players makes you excited for the future. Can't lie. The one-two is pop foul on the left side. Is there a play for Hannah Korn? No. It's if there were rows down in foul territory down that left field line, that would be about six to seven rows up. Or as Core has checked in in left field. Coleman in center, and Boone in right. Sanders at first, Torres at second, Jennings at short, and Brito at third. The battery of Keeney and Ludlam up high with the one-two pitch, two balls and two strikes. I mean, in this game today, what do we already have for Parker? The two-run home run. Pickering's been on base twice. Two two. Well that's a good pitch. Just missed a little bit out. Three and two. It'll be worth following though, just as kind of a fun aside to some of the storylines in softball to start this season. Full count, the pitch. Line foul again. Man, I'll tell you what, Seattle has wasted a lot of really good pitches from Carly Keeney. Sooners lead it three zip win the fifth. Three balls, two strikes. Game just surpassed the hour and ten minute mark. Here's the pitch. Sky to shallow right field. Riley Boone's got the shades on, has a beat, makes the catch. And there's one away. Other games we're following. How about this score? As our scoreboard update, as always, is brought to you by... Air Comfort Solutions, your total home solution for plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and electrical. Make the winning call today, Air Comfort Solutions. Colorado State and Stanford one. First pitch is low to Walling. Katie Walling. One ball and no strikes. Three nothing Sooners lead it. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Here's the pitch from Keeney. Pop foul again down the left field side. Texas. Is this right? They're tied up at one as well, or is that in? I'm having a hard time figuring out which scoreboard to trust, because half of them are wrong. Here's the 1-1 pitch, headed home. A little bit low. This has Texas and Louisiana Lafayette tied in one in the top of the eighth inning. So maybe D1 softball had the wrong score there. Alabama's beaten up on UAB. That's 12 zip early. Florida up 6 zip on Illinois, Chicago. Northwestern here at the Mary Nutter has an early 3 zip lead on Oregon State. Ground ball softly hit towards short. Jennings up with it, throws, and there's two away. Going to see a pinch hitter for the first time today, it looks like. Seattle 
go to the bench and bring in Sophia Kissling. I would assume, I would assume that Spadafora will re-enter and hit here. Now Jen Rocha is going to walk out to the circle. And Patty Gasso is going to bring her infield in with her. Maybe an opportunity to let Keeney get a little bit of a break here. The next game with Loyola Marymount. Slated for an 11 a.m. local, about 1 o'clock first pitch. Pretty good pace right now for that to be a reality. But the good news is that currently Louis, uh, Loyola Marymount is not playing a game. So you don't have to wait for them to finish a game to get on this field. Meetings are over. There's also something they saw in the scouting report with Kissling, just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Here's the first pitch from Keeney. That's way up high, ball one. What a do oh, now, now Patty Gasso is going to make her way out, and we're going to, I mean, this is the second trip, so we're going to see a pitching change. Kane Monticelli is going to come in. Okay. Maybe just a few extra minutes for Monticelli to get ready as Peyton came sprinting in from the bullpen. And we'll have our first Love's Travel Stops pitching change for the Sooners. And a good outing for Carly Keeney. Five and two-thirds. Credit to Seattle. They, they hit her hard. The crowd here gives her a standing ovation. Well deserved. Keeney still hasn't left the circle yet. Here's the first appearance of Peyton Monticelli this weekend. Big smile from Keeney. She's in line to get a win. It'll be her second. Four and two-thirds, four hits, struck out five, walked one, faced 17 batters, threw 78 pitches, and the crowd appreciates this. So Peyton Monticelli will get her first appearance here at the Mary Nutter. This is her sixth appearance on the season. She did start a game. Six innings so far this year. Two hits and struck out three and walked eight. So at least in what we know about Peyton Monticelli, those walk numbers are a little bit high. Opponents hitting just 105 against her and she's hit two batters. So Peyton Monticelli will take over for the Sooners. Here in the top of the fifth inning with Oklahoma on top 3 nothing. Big, hard-throwing right-hander. She is intimidating in the circle, but as personable and as outgoing as maybe any sooner that we've seen. Cassidy Pickering brings in a new face mask. We got a pitching change. Dodger Blaine is tuned in. Happy thoughts. I believe. I believe that's the only change here. There is no other moves. Frito at third, Jennings at short, Torres at second, Sanders at first. Hannah Core has been in. This inning in left with Coleman in center, Boone in right, Ludlam remains behind the plate, and the red tape remains across Ludlam's chest. Here's the first pitch to the pinch hitter, Kissling. That's a strike. Good spot. Loyal Marymount, who's coming up next, is... A bit of a rough start, but they've got a few wins that are impressive. They're just five and nine. Here's the 0-1 pitch. That misses low. They stay tied with Oklahoma State. They beat Oregon. They 
beat Rutgers and Northwestern here this weekend. Here's the 1-1 pitch from Peyton Monticelli. Swing and a miss strike two. I mean, she threw that right by her. That's who's coming up next for now with three zip Sooners. We're in the fifth. Two outs. Monticelli looking to work quickly here and get the Sooners back in the dugout. One ball, two strikes. Peyton brings it home. Boy, that's a really good spot. Just missed outside. So all six pitchers have now thrown this weekend for the Sooners. Two balls and two strikes. Monticelli brings it home. I don't know where that missed. I do not know where that missed. That is an unbelievably tough call. Three balls and two strikes. Wait a minute. This is ball four. They're right. She inherited a ball. Uh, Keeney threw a ball to start it. That's ball four. The, uh, they're correct. That's ball four. Keeney had thrown ball one. That's right. That's, that's ball four. That's right. That's right, coach. Keeney had thrown a ball whenever Monticelli came in. <laughs> and Coach Casso is letting the home plate umpire hear it. I'm pretty good at reading lips, and I believe what I saw is either do your job or that's your job. <laughs> Here we go with a leadoff hitter, Frankenberger. Big pump of the fist from Kissling over at first. Three zip game. Monticelli rocks and fires. A little bit low, ball one. We're in the fifth. A little tighter than maybe some expected against this gritty Seattle Red Hawk team. Frankenberger is one for, or 0 for 1 on the day, reached on a walk. There's ball two. I mean, I don't know how much these are missing by. They look really close. I think our umpire might be shook a little bit. Two balls and no strikes. Here's the pitch from Monticelli. Popped up, shallow left field, racing out to make the catch is Jennings, and that'll do it in the fifth. Base runner is stranded, and as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning, Oklahoma three, Seattle nothing. This is Sooner softball from Learfield. Three nothing Sooners, first pitch in the bottom of the fifth inning to Riley Boone for the lefty Morris. Misses low, ball one as expected. Spadafora re-enters behind the plate for the Red Hawks. Who have had a couple of runners that have been eliminated on the base paths due to some big-time defensive plays for the Sooners. And here's a big-time shot from Boone that bounces right off the fence. Riley rounds first on her way to second with a leadoff double. Boone blast one. That hits right off the middle of that steel fence in right center field. And it's a leadoff double on the fans. Chant boom. Here's Alyssa Brito. Brito digs in from the right side of the plate. She's ready. Here's the first pitch. A little bit out, ball one. In getting the clarification from what looked to be maybe a little bit of incorrect scoreboard population on D1Softball.com, the Colorado State-Stanford game is later this evening. That Texas-Louisiana Lafayette game is 1-1. Here's a looper in a right field, down for a hit. Patty Gasso will send home Riley Boone. The throw is not in time. Boone slides in safely. It's 4 nothing Sooners. An RBI single from Alyssa Brito makes it 4 nothing Oklahoma. And chalk up the 12th RBI in 2024 for the Sooner third baseman. Here's T.R.A. Jennings. She's 0 for 2 on the day. Here's the first pitch. Up high, ball one. Four nothing Sooners. The 
pitch to Jennings. That's in for a strike. This guy strikes on something else. It hasn't been awful this weekend until today. On both sides. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Jennings takes it high, 2-1. Pitch to Jennings, low. Three balls and a strike. It'll be interesting to see what the new rankings look like when they come out after Texas's loss yesterday to Stanford. Pitch, in for a strike. Stanford beating Texas yesterday in eight innings, four to three. And their game against Louisiana Lafayette is not coming up until 12.30 today, so... Sidearm and D1 softball is letting your boy down in our scoreboard update. The 3 2. Grounded towards the left side. Nice play at third by Walling to second for one. No! Brito beat it! Here's Ludlam. Ludlam is singled and walked. Uh, pardon me, homered and walked. First home run in a Sooner uniform left the field in a hurry. First pitch, high ball one. Going to rule out a hit for Jennings. I'll take it. Four zip, Sooner's looking to blow this game open. Here's the pitch. Ludlam had a cut, fouled it straight back. And it started with who else? But Riley Boone, big game Boone. Big play Boone, big time Boone. It all fits. Bouncing one off the fence. Here's the pitch to Ludlam, up high. Get an updated count. One ball, one strike, I believe. Jennings at first, Brito at second, the pitch. High. Two balls and a strike. The problem with the home plate umpire's strike that he gives is his strike total is hidden by his head. So when he gives his count, you can't see it. Here's a pop-up to left field. An easy play for Wilson, who is under it, makes the catch. Sooners fake a tag. And there's one away for Ella Parker. Last time up, Ella Parker drilled a two-run home run over the center field wall. Big deep breath from the left-handed hitting Sooner first baseman. Here's the pitch. That's a pretty good pitch, and it's called a ball. One ball and no strikes. Four nothing, top, uh, bottom of the fifth. Parker had a cut, fouled it straight back. Kentucky and USC Upstate are playing in Spartanville, Spartansburg, excuse me, South Carolina. Game shows it's tied at two. Here's the one one to Parker. She lifts one deep. To right field at the wall. It is gone. A two homer day for the freshman and the extra point is good. It's seven nothing Sooners on a bomb from Parker. Airplane in freshman. And that was launched out of here. This was a one zip game in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Sooners have exploded for six more. 
a two-run homer from Ella Parker, a three-run homer from Ella Parker, and it's 7 nothing, and we'll have a Love's Travel Stops pitching change. And it looks like Seattle has turned to Vance. They have. And Oklahoma has seized firm control of this game. How about that? Going through some stats and some numbers on Vance. One of those, they have six pitchers that they regularly use. Well, I guess... Yeah, six that they use, seven that have thrown. Berkeley Vance, the freshman out of Lakewood, California, is one that they've counted on quite a bit. And the righty has thrown 14 and a third so far this season, including five fairly solid innings against a ranked California team where she scattered eight hits, struck out two, but walked four. She's 1 and 0 on the season. And she'll face Hannah Core. Hannah Core got her first collegiate hit. We talked to Patty Gasso about her in the pregame show. Unfortunately, we had to cut it short because of time constraints. First pitch to Core. A little low, ball 1. So Hannah comes in at one for nine on the season, but she has scored three runs. Can't help but wonder if it's just a matter of time. Here's the 1-0 pitch with the Sooners up seven zip. A little bit up two in them. Sid Sanders waits on deck. First time this season, by the way, I was looking at some batting order. Boone starting this first time this season. Riley's batted in the two hole. Here's the 2 0. Waited on it. Popped a foul off the fencing behind home plate. Patty Gasso is going to call time to talk to her young outfielder. Core played in four games. In the opening weekend last season, had a back injury that ended up sidelining her, sidelining her for the rest of the year. Used as a pinch runner quite a bit, but she seems healthy, she seems happy. She's ahead on the count here, two balls and a strike with the Sooners ahead on the scoreboard, 7 nothing. Here's the 2-1 from Vance, off speed, low, ball three. Kinsey Hansen getting a little rest in this game. We'll see her in game two against Loyola Marymount. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Headed home. Our 3-1 pitch is ball four. And Sooners have another base runner. And here's Sidney Sanders. Quincy Lilio has moved into the on-deck circle for the Sooners. Sanders popped out to short in the second, was hit by a pitch in the fourth. Here's the first pitch to sit. Oh, she popped it up on the infield. Basket catch is made by the catcher, Spadafora, and there's two away. Here's Q. Quincy Lilio will get a chance to pinch hit here. A couple of other scores, just keeping an eye on, sprinkling them in, in every now and then. Cal leads Long Beach State 5 zip. They're playing here at the Mary Nutter Classic. In the Big 12 today. Iowa State has lost to Virginia in extra innings, 1 zip. They'll play Lehigh coming up a little bit later on this afternoon. Here's the first pitch to Q. The Sooners up 7-zip in the fifth. Runner at first is Core, who just walked. The pitch to Q is in for a strike. Here's the 1-0, or the 0-1 pitch to Lilio. 
up high. One ball, one strike. Q looking for her first hit of 2024. This is her 10th plate appearance. She's 0 for 6 with two walks and a hit by pitch. Here's the 1 0 to Lilio. Up and in. 2 and a 2 and 1 part. 2 and 1. Maya Bland waits on deck. Here's the pitch. Outside corner, called strike. Two balls, two strikes. Court first. Here's the pitch to Q. Got a piece of it, stayed alive. Q is one of those players. Last year, we went and we were watching some practice, and she was just really, really stroking it, really hitting the ball hard. In games, though, we haven't been able to see that consistently for Q. Hopefully it changes here. The 2-2 is up high ball three. Full count. Q's ready. The two ball, two strike pitch. Headed home. Three ball, two strike pitch. It's popped up back towards me. Oh. It fell through a hole in the fencing and caught a fan in the head. He's okay. And caught the crowd. There is a little gap between the netting and the actual roof, and it just caught. But everyone's good. No injuries. Let's do the full count again. Here's the pitch to Q. Swinging it. Got it. Inning up. <laughs> the, the bark from Vance in the circle says it all, but the Sooners blow it open. We head to the sixth. It's Oklahoma seven, Seattle nothing. This is Sooner softball from Learfield. Sooner seven, Seattle nothing as we head to the sixth. Back to work for Peyton Monticelli. She'll face the two, three, and four hitters in the Seattle lineup. Defensively, let's see. Sooners will stay the same. Oh, let's check that. Avery Hodge is the new shortstop. Alina Torres Stays at second, so Tiara Jennings getting a little break here in the final few innings as Avery Hodge is in it short. Here's Ty Wilson. First pitch from Monticelli, swinging a miss, strike one. Now there is a quick lineup card adjustment. Jeff Hurrah, who is the head coach at Seattle in his 10th year. Uh, we're good. <laughs> the home plate umpire just pointed to the pinch hitter, Brooklyn Jones, and then pointed at her again. So it is not Ty Wilson. It is Brooklyn Jones. Here's the 0-1. Swing and a miss strike, too. Lefty Jones wasn't even close. Gorgeous, just absolutely gorgeous day here in Palm Springs. 0-2 pitch from Monticelli, a little bit up, one ball, two strikes. Peyton stares in. Now she's ready, has the ball at her hip, brings it in front of her, the 1-2 got, I mean, threw it right by her, and a big fist pump from Monticelli. Strikeouts brought to you by Tinker Federal Credit Union. That's the sixth of the game for Sooner Pitchers. Five of those from Carly Keeney. What an outing. What an outing from Carly Keeney. Now, Seattle 
had some hard hit balls, but Keeney was able to keep him in check. Monticelli has been solid since coming out of the pin. Here's Mikey Morris. First pitch strike. So that final line for Keeney will be four and two thirds, four hits, no runs, walked one, struck out five. In line for the win. Here's the 0-1. Fouled off 0-2. 78 total pitches. 55 of those were strikes. Morris is one for two. She was thrown out at home by Tiare Jennings on a ball to right field when the relay just got away a bit from Torres and Jennings picked it up and threw a strike. 0-2. Popped up. Foul out of play. No balls and two strikes. Seven nothing Sooners were in the sixth. Brito playing even with the bag. A little bit deeper at first. And off the line by Sanders. Straight away in the outfield with Boone a few steps back now and right. Here's the 0-2. Swing it a piece of it. Just barely got by Morris. Doesn't seem as if wind is too much of a factor right now at all. There's no flags, but even the flag-like banners in the outfield are not moving an inch. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Two away. Avis in is 0 for 2, a strikeout victim her last time up. Check that. And Morris will hit here. So after Sin goes 0 for 2, Morris will check in. Here's the first pitch for Monticelli. Swing and a miss. You deal, Peyton. Holy smokes. No balls in a strike. Peyton spins that ball against her right hip. She's ready. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Great spot. Right on that inside corner, 0-2. Crowd claps in unison here in Palm Springs. The 0-2 pitch popped up behind home, played well out of play. Played umpire, wanted a new set of softballs from the Seattle bench. We'll wait to get him until after this 0-2 pitch. 7 nothing Sooners, top of the sixth. Monticelli brings it home. Pop foul again off the net. That ends up shooting back into the field of play where Brito gloves it. Count remains, no balls and two strikes. The pitch, swing and a miss. Peyton Monticelli strikes out the side. That is the eighth strikeout by Sooner pitchers. And Seattle goes down one, two, three strikeouts. Brought to you by Tinker Federal Credit Union. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning, seven, nothing Sooners. Maya Bland leads things off for the Sooners. The second plate appearance of her career. We're in the sixth. Seven, nothing Sooners. First pitch to Bland. Nearly hits her. Ball one. Mm. Maya Bland. She is an athlete. The 1 0. Thought about it. Takes it out. Ball one. Uh, strike one. I'm on that outer edge. Seven runs for the Sooners today on seven hits. Bland takes ball two up. 
shutout performance between Carly Keeney and Peyton Monticelli. Four hits. Eight combined strikeouts. That's low and away. Ball three. Three balls and a strike to Bland. Walk dubbers have been down today for the Sooners. A little concerning over the weekend. Here's the 3-1 pitch to Maya Bland. Ball four. So Maya Bland, who pinch hits here for Jada Coleman, walks and Riley Boone. In a seven-zip game, you're probably not going to see Maya Bland steal a base, but... She can. <laughs> Riley Boone is out of that. One for two, a double, a run scored, and a walk. The lefty waits on the first pitch. It's a bunt. Plan was going for strike one. The ball's in a strike. Long look by Boone at the call from Coach Gasso after the bunt went foul. Here comes the 0-1. There's a soft slap back to the circle. Gloves throws. Didn't get her. Morris made the play. Boone beat it. It's a two-hit day for Riley Boone. And that was a bang-bang play at first base. And here's Alyssa Brito with a chance to end this one in run rule fashion. Here's Brito. Third multi-hit game of the season already for Riley Boone. Brito singled and drove it around her last time. Up swings and fouls this one towards Yankee Stadium. No balls and a strike. Brito waits. First and second. Nobody out the pitch. That misses just a bit out. One ball, one strike. Bland at second. Boone at first. Brito one for three on the day. Pitch. A little I didn't mean to. Check swing. Slow roller to first. Picked up by Fitch. Will shovel to Garcia covering. It almost works as a sacrifice as they retire Brito. Three to four. First base to the second baseman Garcia covering. And there'll be one away. The runners at second and third. I, unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't think we get to rule that as a sacrifice. Here's Avery Hodge. Why not just walk it off here, Hodge? First pitch. A little bit up, ball one. Avery Hodge. And that rotation at second base. Matchup oriented. Here's the 1 0. Hodge almost gets hit by it. Two balls and no strikes. Two thirty one average. It's a little under the Mendoza line whenever it comes to runners in scoring position. Here's the two oh. Change that here. Take strike one. Hodge has scored three runs this season, walked once, driven in a run. On that triple last week in McNeese State that almost left the yard. 7 nothing here sooner is the winning run the game ending run is at third Here's the 2-1 it's a bunt it's a beauty bland slides in safely at home ball game win Colin Sooners game over wait hold on hold on The home plate umpire 
is saying something to the Seattle head coach. And what are we ruling? What? What? Oh, they're saying Hodge stepped out of the box. No, they're going to say Avery stepped out of the box. Now that's not an out, but it is a dead ball. Oh, it was perfectly placed. And now there's confusion everywhere. Pitching coach for Seattle, she's not a happy camper right now. They're saying Hodge stepped out of the box in what would have been the game-ending play. But instead, Bland retreats to third, Boone retreats to second, and it's a strike. That's a new rule that got implemented last year. All right, we'll do it again. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Avery Hodge headed home. And she pops one in the left field. This might be deep enough to score Bland, who tags. The throw is not going to get there. The Sooners are going to win it in run rule fashion on a sack fly walk-off RBI by Avery Hodge. Extend the winning streak. The Sooners continue to roll. It is now 66 in a row. And the final score from Palm Springs in game one on a Sunday. Oklahoma 8, Seattle nothing. The Bud Light Post Game Show is coming up next. This is Sooner Softball from Learfield.